Should NASCAR limit the number of overtime attempts and will they penalize Carson Hosovar for intentionally wrecking Harrison Burton? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Happy Canada Day to all the Canadians. Happy Canadian Canada Day. Come to Canada. Oh, we'll take you. We like you just the way you are. Man, that day really gets overshadowed by the United States Day on Thursday, doesn't it? That's a real shame. Either way, welcome back. So, NASCAR, the Nashville Cup Series race on Sunday night. Yeah, that devolved into absolute chaos, didn't it? I mean, five overtime attempts, 31 laps past the scheduled race distance, and we finally got a winner, that being Joey Logano, as he went all Scott Dixon and stretched his fuel mileage further than anybody expected. On Sunday night, during, like, the fourth attempt at the overtime, I believe, I tweeted out that NASCAR needs to do something about this. Limit the number of overtime attempts. This is insanity. And I stand by that. It's a hill I'm willing to stand on. And, man, the Internet was not happy. Easily my most unpopular take. I got ratioed, people calling me, personally attacking me, saying that they're taller than me, and this and that. And honestly, that's hurtful. Rude, even, I would argue. But whatever, people brought up a decent number of points, and I'm I'm here for everybody's opinion. I gave my opinion, you gave me your opinion, totally fine with that. Why are we attacking everybody? We don't have to be so... The vitriol on Twitter, just relax a little bit. Let's have a conversation here. So one of the main points that people brought up is we tried the limit, and we did. We used to have this in NASCAR, where they would have three overtime attempts. And then Kevin Harvick had to go out there and ruin it for us at Talladega in 2015 when he intentionally wrecked Trevor Bain on a restart, knowing his car wouldn't get up to speed, wanting to advance in the playoffs, knowing that the next caution would end the race, went ahead and dumped Trevor Bain at the start-finish line, caused a big wreck, race ended, Kevin Harvick goes on and advances in the playoff round. Yeah, not ideal right there. And obviously it's race manipulation, and NASCAR should have penalized him then, absolutely could penalize him now with the SMT data that they have, which that right there is the safety net. That's the barrier to stop somebody from doing this. The fact that we can go back and look at you intentionally doing this and then issue penalties for that. And I think that's now the deterrent. Yeah, it can still happen. Don't get me wrong, right? But the same way that people are like, five overtimes is just an anomaly. It doesn't happen all the time. It's not that serious. Well, Kevin Harvick doing what he did happen one time. It's not that serious type of same, same energy there. So I think it's okay to, you know, question it and also build in parameters to make sure that that doesn't happen again, a safeguard, if you will. So if you did have three overtime attempts, it still race finishes under caution. And people really seem to not like that. People don't want the race in under caution. Some people want ARCA rules, which is even if there's a caution on the white flag lap, we still go back and we're guaranteeing a green flag finish. And I don't really like that. In my opinion, I don't like that. Uh, I'm the traditionalist side of my brain says in the race at the scheduled race distance. And I, I stand by that. I'm willing to go three attempts, right? I think that's fine. And yes, the five overtime that we saw on uh, Sunday night at Nashville, that is the anomaly. Doesn't happen. Has never happened before. Will it happen again? I'm sure at some point, but it's not like it's going to happen next week at Chicago. So we have seen, you know, wild overtimes. Last year at Coda in 2023 in the Cup Series, we had three overtime attempts, added like an extra 40 minutes onto the race just by how long the lap time is there under caution. And yeah, it looked like amateur hour out there. You had guys from other series, you know, laughing at how poorly that race was run there at the end. Yeah, you had the 2017 Brickyard 400. That devolved into chaos as well with multiple overtime attempts and just a lot of wrecked race cars. The Truck Series race, the finale last year, the championship finale at Phoenix, went 29 laps past the scheduled race distance, four overtime finishes to finally end that one and give Ben Rhodes that championship. Yeah, I I mean, you're right. They are anomalies. They don't happen very often. But when they do, it just, to me, looks bad. And I see a lot of people being like, that was an exciting finish. Don't you like the strategy about it? It's not really a strategy, though, because at that point, crew chiefs have strategized to make it to the end of the race, potentially one overtime. They didn't they didn't plan on having five overtimes going 31 laps past the scheduled race distance. And shout out to Paul Wolf and Joey Logano. They absolutely got it done and they stretched their fuel mileage. Good for them. They won that race uh, fair and square. But there's no real strategy that goes into five attempts because you don't really know when the race is going to end. It's like telling the crew chief, hey, make sure you have enough gas to go the distance. Well, what's the distance? Eh, We're not really sure yet. Uh, Okay. Uh, Not really sure how you can plan that one out. But okay, you can make the argument for strategy. I don't think that's really the strategy race that I envision, but I'm here to listen to to the arguments. And then you have the exciting finish argument. Again, Yeah, I can see how maybe that excitement is there. I get it, right? Like, yeah, seeing uh, if Tyler Reddick could get to Joey Logano was certainly enticing. Can Zane Smith steal one right here and really send the playoffs into absolute chaos? Yeah, those were all factors that certainly played into it. But 
do you want to see a race devolve into a crapshoot? I get it. I am very much pro embrace the chaos type of thing. But after five overtime attempts, even I was sitting on the couch last night being like, can this race just end at some point? So I'm interested to see what people have to think. I can, I'm on board with three overtimes. I'm not necessarily on board with unlimited overtimes. And I know there's arguments to be made for it, but yeah, I'm interested to see what people had to say. Moving on to Carson Hosevar, who was involved in a caution, but he, the caution had already come out on Sunday night when he intentionally wrecked Harrison Burton under caution. He rolled up alongside of him and then hooked Harrison in the right rear and spun him out under caution. Now, NASCAR typically frowns upon that. I mean, we saw Austin Hill do it to Cole Custer at Charlotte a few weeks ago, got in trouble, penalized during the week for it. Uh, we saw William Byron do the same thing. At, well, not hook him, but you know, wreck Denny Hamlin under caution at Texas back in 2022. Points penalty, monetary fine, appealed it, monetary fine. So NASCAR does have a history of handing out penalties for that thing. And honestly, Carson Hosovar relapsed. He absolutely needs to get a penalty this time around. He has a long list of intentionally wrecking people. That's just what this guy does. It's his MO. He did it in short track racing and late models, super late models when he raced those. He's done it in the truck series. He's done it in the cup series. I mean, in the truck series alone, he's turned Tate Fogelman down the front stretch at Las Vegas. He intentionally tried to wreck Taylor Gray at Martinsville down the backstretch. He hooked Colby Howard in the right rear, turned him head onto the wall at IRP. Nick Lights at Richmond. Carson Hosovar needed a caution, so he went ahead and dumped the uh, Nick Lights 33 truck to get a caution for it. Last year at Martinsville uh, in the Cup Series race, he intentionally wrecks Ty Gibbs. Texas, last year, he intentionally maybe it wrecked Nick Sanchez, hooked him, turned him head onto the wall uh, at, at Texas. And you can argue Sanchez was already out of sorts a little bit and Josevar maybe just finished him off, but the point still stands. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. And then throw on, you know, on top of that, the multiple times where he stopped on track to draw a caution and all NASCAR's ever done throughout this entire thing of him acting out is give him a two lap penalty for aggressive driving. At some point, at some point, Carson Hosovar needs to be penalized for his continued outburst. He can't control his emotions, and his default is to seemingly wreck people on purpose when he feels like it. And Saturday, or Sunday night, rather, was no different. Harrison Burton, he wasn't happy with him, and a lot of fans were like, well, Harrison Burton break-checked him. Well, Harrison Burton didn't break-check Carson Hosovar into his right rear to spin him out. That's not how that works. Carson Hosovar still had to turn left and hook him. And it's just uncalled for. It's unsafe. And at some point, somebody is going to get hurt because of his actions, and NASCAR needs to do something about it. They need to penalize the kid. Yeah, TV seems to let him off the hook more often than not. Oh, he's got a good personality. He wears funny hats. Michael Waltrip thinks it's great. The same way he thinks that a monkey banging symbols is great too, probably. But at the end of the day, the kid just continually does this. And yeah, he sits with the fans in the grandstands on Friday night for the truck series race at Nashville. And people are taking pictures and they're like, this is so cool. Yeah, except for when he puts a helmet on, he becomes a bit of a dick and he's intentionally wrecking people. And that is bad. So I'm interested to see if NASCAR does something about it. They did say post-race on Sunday night at Nashville that they are going to look into it. So we'll see if he does get penalized for it. But I would argue that he definitely should. I don't think he should get suspended a race. He should definitely be able to race at Chicago. But he does deserve a points penalty and a monetary fine as well. If he's going to keep acting like this, you have to pay the consequences at some point. So let me know in the comments what you think about the overtime finish. Should they limit it? Should it be unlimited? Limited. Should it just end at race distance? And what do you think about Carson Hosovar and his outburst that he continually seems to have? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.